Okay, boys, I think we're done for now. I'm quite disappointed. Neither of you yet possess the necessary speed. You two are still thinking before you move, rather than just moving. I'm afraid this habit is especially strong with you, Vegeta. This overthinking is limiting your fighting speed. <laughs> Messages can only travel through your nervous system so fast. When you rely on thoughts for physical action, you lose precious fighting time. <laughs> Your end goal should be to master the ability to have each part of your body think and move independently of the other parts. But I admit this is exceedingly difficult. In fact, not even Lord Beerus has mastered it, and he's a god. So, allow me to take you through every step of the training required in a most meticulous fashion. You mean your body reacts without you having to think? That's exactly right. Birth. Goku's house. Several days passed and although Goku was happy to be with his family and friends, it was undeniable that the frustration and anguish from training were leaving Saiyan distressed. Yes, Goku felt frustrated and anguished because he didn't know how to overcome Frieza's current powers. And after facing Gohan in his beast form, Goku for the first time felt that he was getting older and that the limits of his powers had reached. Goku started to remember things that happened in the past. Goku had felt this way when Gohan surpassed his powers by achieving Super Saiyan 2, however, that time the Zenkai in his body drove him to continue training. After saving the Earth by being blown up by Cell along with King Kai on that small planet, in the same way that Cell came back even stronger due to the power of Zenkai that the Saiyan have in their bodies, Goku also evolved. Goku asked not to be revived so he could train and evolve his newly acquired powers, however, a new Budokai Tenkaichi was approaching at that time and Goku was given only 24 hours to participate and meet his second son, Goten. Vegeta then took advantage of Babidi's magic and forced Goku to face him, so for the first time, Goku used Super Saiyan 2. But Goku had gone further, at that moment he had already surpassed even the power of Super Saiyan 2. Goku had achieved the power of Super Saiyan 3, and this made Vegeta furious. Goku came back from his thoughts with a smile on his face as he remembered everything he had been through. Although frustrated and distressed, Goku was happy. His Saiyan blood was pulsing again. No, I haven't surpassed all my limits yet, said Goku, getting up from the ground. Chi-Chi asks, what was that? Goku, dear. Goku responds, sorry Chi-Chi, it was great being with you all this time, you know. I missed you and the others, that's why I decided to come to Earth, but I feel like it's time to start training again. With a sad look, Chi Chi asks, but you're only here with me for a month, stay a little longer, why do you always have to be training? Goku responds, forgive me, but this goes beyond my own wishes. It's something I can't control, my body is calling me to push the limits. But where are you going, daddy? Gohan asked. With a serious look, Goku coldly responds, I will confront Lord Beerus. What? confront Lord Beerus? Everyone who was there questioned themselves in disbelief. But with a simple wave, Goku disappears using teleportation. Beerus Planet. Meanwhile, at Beerus Palace, was explained to the God of Destruction everything he had understood about Gohan's new transformation and how it would now be easy to train Broly. Beerus said, I see, this is how Broly can finally control his own powers and become much more powerful. Exactly, Whis replied. That way you won't have to worry about Frieza and his new powers. Of course, I'm not saying he can beat him, but Frieza's actions are starting to worry me. Maybe it's time to put an end to him. Reviving him was the only way to bring him to our side to help in the tournament of power, and we have to admit, he was a huge help. However, he is overstepping his limits and it's time to put him in his rightful place, which is to just be his vassal, Lord Beerus. Whis continued saying. Beerus answers, I could put an end to that worm once and for all, but I can't directly interfere again like I did with that Zamasu guy. If I do something like that again it's very likely that Grand Zeno will disappear with our universe. But there's no denying it, that brat of Goku's son left me perplexed, that power he demonstrated is very great. Maybe he could be the next Hakaishin instead of Goku or Vegeta, Beerus continued saying. Whis then replied, well, there is Broly. If his ability is really as big as we are imagining, maybe he would be a good choice too and, yes, Broly would be perfect to be the next Hakaishin, Lord Beerus. But before that, how about a new fight between you and me, this time using all your powers? Goku replied after appearing at Beerus Palace using teleportation. 
Sometimes you can be quite cheeky, Son Goku, Beerus said with a serious expression. Goku and Beerus looked at each other. The silence that huge hall made was uncomfortable, but this discomfort was broken after Beerus's voice echoed throughout the room. Okay, Son Goku. In fact, I've been willing to see how much you've evolved for some time now. But I warn you, if Frieza and his son were capable of doing all that to you, you better be prepared, because I'm going to use all my power and I'll only deal one blow. If you die, well, I won't be to blame for that," Beerus said with a frightening tone of voice. No, Lord Beerus, wait a minute, I think. I accept my fate," said Goku, interrupting with speech. Goku began to remember the first fight he had against Beerus where he didn't use all of his powers. That had frustrated Saiyan in a way that not even Cell and Bu had. Goku had a radiant smile on his face, he knew the risk he was taking, but his blood and heart yearned for it. Whis, take us to another dimension, demanded Beerus. Whis then took them to that special dimension where he had trained Goku and Vegeta at one point and now, Goku and Beerus were face to face and ready for combat. Goku then activated Ultra Instinct, however, when Beerus raised his powers, that entire dimension began to shake. Cracks in the dimensional wall began to appear, not even that special dimension was supporting Beerus' powers. Goku was completely perplexed. The difference in powers was absurd. Finally Goku saw with his own eyes what the power of a god of destruction was, which made one wonder how far his powers were from his true powers. However, while his thoughts kept him static, Beerus had already begun his attack. An immense blast of energy was launched at Goku who even tried to dodge it but just like what happened against Gohan, his body didn't move fast enough even when using Ultra Instinct. Beerus' attack was so fast that everything ended almost without even starting. Beerus said, I'm sorry, Goku. This has always been the Saiyan's problem. This desire for power has always blinded them from seeing reality. Who knows, maybe your friends will bring you back with the Dragon Balls in the future. You could be a great Hakai Shin, but... But what? said a shrill voice with a mocking tone. Suddenly, an orange aura appeared, an unimaginable key began to flood that entire dimension. I don't believe it, Whis said in disbelief at what was happening. You did it again, didn't you, Son Goku? Beerus said with a smile on his face as he saw Goku emerge with a new transformation from the explosion that his attack had generated. I'm ready, said Goku with a confident tone of voice. Whis Special Dimension, the God of Destruction Beerus and the Angel Whis were perplexed by Goku's new feat, his new transformation emanated an absurdly powerful key. Analyzing everything he was witnessing, Beerus came to the conclusion that Goku had done something similar to what he did in the Tournament of Power. Beerus began to remember the fight between Goku and Jiren, and at the height of the fight, when everyone had thought that Goku had already lost, Saiyan decided to form a spirit bomb, the most powerful attack that Goku has in his arsenal of skills. After remembering all that, Beerus understood what Goku had done. He used the same strategy that at the time was a tragic coincidence. This time, in a deliberate way, Goku took advantage of Beerus' ultimate attack to become stronger. But something still didn't make sense in this whole story. Beerus knew that Goku couldn't move before the attack, so for Beerus there was only one thing to do and that was to question Saiyan about everything that was happening. Tell me Goku, I understand that this time you did it in a planned way. However, not even you would know how you would survive my attack, so how did you do it? I can't believe you came here thinking about dying, or am I wrong? Beerus asked Goku. Goku then replied, yes and no, I came knowing I would have to test my limits and I knew I could lose my life. 
I also knew that even if I tried to escape his attack it would be impossible, his powers were at a level that my own powers could not match, then my body became paralyzed, but not because I couldn't move or because I was scared, but because I knew there was no way to escape his attack, Beerus, confused, then questioned him, so you bet your life, was it pure luck, Goku replied, yes, I bet everything, however, my bet was not just about giving my life to luck but giving my life to something bigger, only then could I do what I did. Goku then remembers times when he bet everything on what he truly believed. I always bet on what I believe in, but it's not a simple bet, I really believe in effort, I really believe that people can overcome their limits, and overcoming your limits is the basis for achieving the unimaginable, the impossible, said Goku, Beerus then said, so what's your goal, what's your next level, how far do you want to get, Goku then replied, well, my limit is to have no limits, my goal is to prove that limits can and should be overcome and I will do that. Suddenly, Goku appeared in front of Beerus and hit him so hard that Beerus was thrown away and soon after, Goku went after Whis. The speed Goku reached was so great that Whis finally understood what was happening. Finally I understood, he used Kaioken together with Ultra Instinct. His desire to overcome his limits meant that his body, which was supposed to move alone, had an ability that in theory increases his physical capabilities, but on the other hand increases his damage. You mix the skill that aims to attack with a skill that aims to defend. In this way, one skill balanced the weakness of the other skill. This is truly incredible, Son Goku, Whis said in thought. Goku then said, Mr. Whis, now it's your turn, let's fight. Goku charged at Whis at an absurd speed, thus surprising the angel with a well-aimed blow. But without realizing it, Goku was no longer fully using the transformation he had just awakened. Only a spark of that power was still in his body. Whis then hit him back with a fatal attack that caused Goku to faint and return to normal. Whis said, You have become very strong, but you are still no match for me. I will not let you die, but understand, until you truly surpass Lord Beerus's powers, you will still have a long way to go until you reach my level. Beerus then appeared and said, What a powerful punch he gave me. This Goku can really surpass me. He's reaching an incredible level of power, but mixing two skills like that could end up taking his life, and he can't die now since we need him for what's to come. Whis responds, Exactly, Lord Beerus, Goku needs to understand that he is very important and what is about to happen will change the entire existence. Goku was in a whirlwind of emotions and sensations. The vastness of the special dimension seemed even more infinite and relentless. In front of him, Beerus and Whis kept challenging glances, ready for another battle. Goku activated his new transformation, Goku Orange, a balance between Kaioken and Ultra Instinct. The orange aura emanating power overwhelmingly, and he felt every cell from his body throbbing with an almost divine energy. Beerus said, So Son Goku is ready for another round? Goku replied, I'll always be ready, Lord Beerus. The battle began with an intensity that made the dimension shake. Goku moved with impressive speed and accuracy, exchanging blows with Beerus at a hallucinating pace. Each power shock created waves of energy that reverberated throughout the space. After a fierce exchange of blows, Goku finally managed to connect a powerful punch that launched Beerus away. Taking advantage of the moment, Goku followed with a series of quick and accurate attacks, culminating in a final blow that left Beerus lying on the floor. Goku happy, said, I got it. I defeated Lord Beerus. But before he could taste the victory, Whis appeared before him, impeccable and serene as always. Whis, watching Goku celebrate, then said, Congratulations, Goku. But now it's my turn. The fight with Whis was of a completely different nature. Goku moved at the same speed and accuracy, but Whis seemed to be everywhere at the same time, easily dodging and counterattacking with an almost ethereal grace. Goku said, How are you? It's so fast. 
Wiz smiled, his almost poetic movements, and with a single blow, made Goku faint again. When Goku covered his conscience, he was back to the starting point, ready to start all over again. Goku, a little stunned said, I can't give up. I have to try one more time. And so, the cycle was repeated. Goku faced Beerus, defeated him with superhuman effort, only to be overcome by Wiss again and again. Each time Goku fell, he felt a mixture of frustration and increasing determination. He knew he was approaching, but something was still missing. Goku said, I know I can. I just need. Understand how. Once again, Goku defeated Beerus and faced Wiss. With each attempt, he was closer, adjusting his strategies and seeking new ways of attacking and defending. Wiss said, you're getting stronger, Goku. But there's still a long way ahead. Finally, after numerous attempts, Goku met on the floor, exhausted and injured, looking at Wiss who remained unshakable. The sense of defeat was overwhelming, but at the same time he felt a new understanding growing inside him. Goku said, I understand now. It's not just about power. At that moment, Goku woke up from his dream. He was in his house, lying in his bed. The morning sun entered the windows, bringing a sense of peace and renewal. Chi Chi was by her side, worried. Chi Chi asked, Goku, are you okay? You were moving so much at night. Goku smiled, a serene and confident smile. Goku then replied, yes, Chi Chi, I'm fine. I just had a dream. A dream that showed me that I still have a long way to go, but I know I can reach the impossible, and I'll keep trying, ever. Chi Chi sighed, knowing that, despite everything, this was the man she loved, a tireless warrior who would never give up overcoming her own limits. Chi Chi said, Wiss asked me that as soon as you woke up, I warned you that he will be waiting for you at Bulma's house, and it happened a long time ago, six months to be more exact. Goku asked, six months? I've been sleeping for six months? Chi Chi replied, yes dear, I was very worried, but Wiss said it was alright and that you should wake up after this period of six months. I think he used some magic in you. Goku said, damn, that's why I'm so hungry. Well, I'm going to Bulma's house and I take the opportunity to eat right there. Bulma's house. Goku used the teleportation to go to Bulma's house, where he was immediately received by his old friend. Bulma said, Goku, finally woke up. Chi Chi told me that you were sleeping for six months. Come on, the food is ready. Goku was hungry like never before, and quickly joined the table. The vision of a huge amount of food made your eyes shine. He began to devour everything enthusiastically, while Bulma, Vegeta, and Whis watched. After eating until she was satisfied, Goku finally turned his attention to Whis, who watched patiently. Goku asked, Whis, what's going on? Why have I been sleeping for six months? Whis replied, well, Goku, that blow I gave you was stronger than you imagined. I used a technique to induce deep and healing sleep, allowing your body to recover completely. But now that you are back, we have an urgent subject to address. Goku, without understanding anything he asked, what is it, Whis? Whis then replied, it's about Jiren from Universe 11. He has awakened a new dark power and is crying for you. He wants revenge after what happened in the power tournament. Goku said, Jiren, he wants a rematch. That's great. I was wanting to test my new boundaries. Vegeta seeing Goku's enthusiasm said, You are always excited about a fight, but be careful, if Jiren has awakened a dark power, it can be more dangerous than before. Whis replied, Exactly. We must immediately go to Universe 11. Jiren is causing disturbances, and from what we know, his thirst for revenge has made him even stronger and unpredictable. Goku got up, his determination visible. Goku then said, So let's go soon. I look forward to seeing how much he strengthened and show him how much I have evolved too. Whis smiling said, very well. Hold on, Goku. Let's go to Universe 11. Whis touched Goku's shoulder, and in a moment they both disappeared from the earth, leaving behind a room full of worried friends, but confident of Goku's ability to face any challenge. Universe 11 when they arrived in Universe 11, Goku and Whis were greeted by Topo, the Pride Trooper's leader who led them to where Jiren was. Jiren's presence was oppressive, his shadowy aura pulsing with evil power. Jiren said, Goku, finally appeared. I've been waiting for this moment. In the power tournament, you humiliate me, but now, I'm stronger than ever. Get ready for revenge. Goku replied, Jiren, I have also evolved since our last date. I'm ready for this fight. 
Wiss watched carefully as the two warriors stared at, their auras colliding with a power demonstration that made the floor shake. The battle was about to start. Wiss said, Remember, Goku, this struggle is not just about strength. It's about control and purpose. Show Jiren the true meaning of overcoming the boundaries. With these words in mind, Goku activated his new transformation, the orange aura shining intensely around him. The final battle between Goku and Jiren was about to begin, and the universe eagerly awaited the outcome of this epic confrontation. Universe 11 Before the fight began, Goku began to question Jiren's desire for revenge. After all, for Goku, all this hatred made no sense. Goku began to remember the Tournament of Power, where in the end, he and Jiren had become friends. Goku asked, Jiren, before we start, I need to understand something. Why this desire for revenge? After the Tournament of Power, I thought we had become friends. Jiren, with his dark aura, stared at Goku before responding. Jiren responds, Goku, it is true that I finished the Tournament of Power with a renewed respect for you. However, the defeat I suffered left a deep mark on my spirit. My people were destroyed, and I promised myself that I would become the strongest in the universe to avenge this loss. Losing to you created a conflict within me. How can I avenge my people if I can't defeat you? <laughs> Goku asked, so that's why you're so determined to face me again? Jiren replied, exactly. I gathered the Dragon Balls from my universe and made a request to the Dragon, to grant me the same ability that Saiyans have, Zenkai. Now, each battle makes me stronger. Only then will I be able to achieve my goal. Goku was surprised to hear this. The Zenkai ability was something he and the other Saiyans had always used to overcome their limits. But in Jiren, an already incredibly powerful warrior, it could create a formidable opponent. Goku then says, I get it, Jiren. So let's settle this once and for all. I'm ready. The battle begins. Goku activated his new transformation, his orange aura glowing brightly. Jiren, with his dark power, advanced towards Goku and the battle began with an explosion of energy. The two warriors exchanged fierce blows, each impact creating shockwaves that resonated throughout the universe. Goku felt the difference in Jiren's power, each attack stronger and more precise than the previous one, highlighting the effect of Zenkai. Whis, thinking Jiren is really stronger, but there is something strange about his aura. A dark power dominates him, and this could be dangerous for both of them. As the fight continued, Goku found an opening and launched a powerful attack, engulfing his fist in the orange energy of his new form. The blow hit Jiren squarely, causing him to fall to the ground hard. Goku, with his bright orange aura, faced Jiren, whose dark aura pulsed with menacing energy. The blows between the two warriors were intense, each trying to overcome the other. The fight seemed even, but Goku was determined to win. Goku says, Jiren, you're getting stronger with each blow, but there's still something missing. Jiren, panting, didn't stop attacking, but Goku was ready for any move. In a moment of Jiren's distraction, Goku concentrated his energy and launched a powerful direct attack, hitting Jiren squarely and knocking him to the ground. Goku asks, Jiren, are you okay? Jiren slowly stood up, the dark aura around him diminishing. He looked at Goku with an expression of frustration mixed with relief. Jiren says, Goku, you are truly powerful, but this darkness, it's not just my desire for revenge. I feel like something is controlling me. Wiss approached, watching Jiren carefully. Wiss said, it seems your request to the dragon had unexpected consequences. The dark energy in your heart is unnatural. We must discover its origin. Goku then stated, Jiren, even if you have the Zenkai ability, there is still something missing. You are not a Saiyan and you do not have the body of a Saiyan. I remember an enemy from the past, Cell. He had the cells of Saiyans and managed to take advantage of Zenkai but because it was just a copy, it could never achieve the same results as a Saiyan's. Jiren asked, are you saying that even with this power, I'm still limited? Goku replied, exactly. Zenkai is an incredible ability, but it's not just about power. It's about spirit, the will to fight and excel. That's something that can't simply be given or copied. Jiren reflected on Goku's words, realizing the truth in them. The dark energy around him began to slowly disappear, revealing a calmer and more aware Jiren. Jiren then says, Goku, maybe you're right. 
I sought power in every way possible, but I forgot what it truly means to be a warrior. Wiz says, it's important to remember that true power comes from within. Let's discover the source of this dark energy and free you from its influence. Goku, Jiren, let's do this together. You're not alone in this fight. Jiren, still reluctant, accepted help from Goku and Whis. The battle between them not only tested their strength, but also revealed a new challenge to be faced in unity. The warriors now knew that a greater dark force was at play, and together, Goku, Jiren and Whis prepared to unravel this mystery and restore peace to the universes. Somewhere in the universe 11, Whis closed his eyes and extended his scepter, focusing on the dark energy he had detected in Jiren. He muttered a few words and a bluish light began to shine on the top of the scepter. Whis said, I will trace the origin of this dark energy. If it is not natural, there must be a source somewhere in the universe. Whis began to sense the direction of the energy, leading his gaze to a distant point in space. Confused, Whis began to think, interesting. It seems to come from a very distant planet within Universe 11. An uninhabited, newly formed planet. That's strange. I'm going to need answers. Wiss refocused and used his telepathic ability to communicate with Universe 11's Angel and God of Destruction, but he was unsuccessful. Wiss said, this is worrying, it means that someone or something very powerful is masking this energy. It could be a deity or an entity of a similar level to Angel's. I will talk to Daishinkin. Both talked for a long time, and even Daishinkin was not understanding what was happening, but in order not to anger Zenosama, the father of all angels decided to let Wiss take care of the matter. Daishinkin responds, I understand. This could be more dangerous than we think. We need to find out who or what is behind this dark energy. Investigate and update me on everything that's going on. Wiss responds, I agree. I'll investigate the planet and find out more. Goku, Jiren, get ready. Let's go to that planet immediately. Goku and Jiren nodded, ready for the challenge that awaited them. Wiss used his scepter to transport the three to the distant planet in Universe 11. Upon arrival, they were greeted by a desolate and eerie scene. Dark energy was present everywhere, making the air heavy and oppressive. Wiss spoke, we're in the right place. Stay alert. Something or someone very powerful is here, and we don't know what to expect. As they advanced across the barren terrain, an imposing presence began to manifest itself before them, a shadow that seemed to swallow the light around it. So, you guys are finally here. I've been waiting for you, said the mysterious voice. Goku, Jiren prepared for battle, knowing they would face an unknown and powerful enemy. The true origin of the dark energy was about to be revealed. Even Whis is on alert, as that being was responsible for controlling someone as powerful as Jiren, as well as being responsible for the disappearance of a Kaioshin, a god of destruction and an angel. Suddenly, a blast of ki came from the mysterious and obscured cave from which the dark energy emanated. Before anyone could react, the blast hit Jiren squarely, piercing him fatally. Goku shouted Jiren. No! Jiren fell to the ground, his body limp. Goku and Whis looked on in shock and sadness. A worried Whis then replied, Goku, we need to escape. That ki blast was a divine ki blast. The being we are facing is probably a deity. Before they could move, Wiss was paralyzed by some invisible magic. Another blast of divine ki was launched, this time towards Goku. It would be Saiyan's certain death. However, at the last moment, a spark of hope appears. A humanoid figure appeared, taking the full brunt of the attack and surviving. You! Vegeta! Goku exclaimed with a smile on his face. Vegeta says, not so fast. Come out of the darkness and face me face to face. Vegeta stood up, revealing his new transformation, Ultra Ego Orange. His aura glowed brightly with a combination of orange and purple energy. Goku, surprised, asked, Vegeta, how did you get this new transformation? And how did you get here? Vegeta, with a serious look, then replied, I'll explain, but now I need to eliminate this thing whatever it is. The voice in the cave then spoke, Vegeta, the proud prince of the Saiyan. You have achieved a very interesting ability, you have evolved your way of absorbing damage received into your body to become even stronger. However, I wonder how much damage you can take before you succumb, little prince. Vegeta nervous then responds, well, come and try it yourself. I already told you, come out of the darkness, and face me, you worm. 
Vegeta reallocated all the damage received in his fists and launched a powerful final flash against that cave that exploded into pieces revealing the enemy's true form. It was Daishinkan, Goku, Vegeta and especially Whis were perplexed by this revelation, they couldn't believe what their eyes were seeing. Whis asked, Dad, but, what are you doing, Daddy? No. You can call me uncle. I am Daishinkan's twin brother who was exiled a long time ago. My name is Evil Daishinkan. And I'm here to tell you the whole truth. About my brother and about the universes. Somewhere in the universe 11. Still paralyzed by his uncle's magic, Wiz cries out for the answers promised by evil Daishinkan. Wiz asks, speak quickly. What happened? What did my father do? Evil Daishinkan responds, okay. I'll tell you the whole truth about the universes. This reality is just a mirror of another reality and both are governed by the cosmic gods. In the hierarchy, these divine beings are above Xenosama, in fact, they are the ones who choose who will lead each cosmos universe where the other universes reside. The order is as follows, first come the cosmic gods, second the angel king, third Xenosama, or whoever the cosmic gods choose. In third place comes the Daishinkan, in fourth place Xenosama's security guards, and in fifth place the angels. His mother, the mother of all angels is on the same level as Daishinkan. After these five positions come the gods of destruction and you know the rest. Well, in another cosmic reality everything is happening perfectly as it should be. But in our reality no. Firstly because the fight between Xenosama and Zalama resulted in the creation of these corrupted universes. This created an uneasiness between the cosmic deities of our and another reality, as both must coexist in full harmony, but the three cosmic gods of our reality allowed things to occur this way. I noticed this whole problem, in fact, the Angel King too, but that was not the time to change the being that would be sovereign over the twelve universes as long as they remained balanced. And so Xenosama continued as the supreme being under all universes. But as the conflict was the basis for the creation of the twelve universes, they ended up growing unevenly and with a lot of evil and resentment. Many years passed and the conflicts did not cease. Regardless of the universe, everyone was full of problems. That's why the creation of the position of God of Destruction, this was the way found by Xenosama to balance the universes. But as you know, that didn't do anything. Then in Universe 7, a human hybrid from a race of ape men known today as Saiyan discovered something incredible, time travel. This shouldn't be used by such simple creatures. Not even King Kai and all the other Shins, who were the entities created to govern small realities under the orders of the God of Destruction, had the prerogative to control time. But when Xenosama gave them this ability, it opened up the possibility that at some point this would happen somewhere among the twelve universes. And as you know, because of this the reality within Universe 7 was broken into several fragments and even another Xenosama was created from it. And to make things even worse, a tournament of power was held to finally heal the differences that existed between all twelve universes. This angered the cosmic gods of the other reality, and this would have consequences, as each shock in the structure of our cosmic universe that was created from these small breaks in structure in singular universes affects the other reality. So the three cosmic gods together with the Angel King had the idea of changing the supreme god of the twelve universes who had already messed up, and my brother and I were in charge of doing it. That's when my brother surprised me. He was working for the cosmic gods of the other reality. He took me there and then I saw it. The other reality had already been completely destroyed, and it was precisely the Saiyan who destroyed it. The Saiyan's evolutionary capacity reached such an absurd level that they surpassed the three cosmic gods of that reality and killed them. But all of this only happened because our reality conflicted with their reality, which for a specific reason accelerated their destruction. My brother told me that in that reality it was just the same, the human hybrid Saiyan who discovered time travel came back in the past and dominated the Saiyan race and evolved them to a completely new level. In other words, the three cosmic gods of the other reality were right, they were afraid that our cosmic gods would not trust them as the conflict between both realities was about to collapse. In that reality this was called angelical war. So to prevent this from happening to our reality, my brother decided to kill Xenosama and control the Saiyan at his pleasure. However, this would not solve the problem of the other cosmic reality, 
but my brother didn't care, he knew that the extinction of that reality would make him the new supreme being among the entire current Cosmo universe. And it happened. Well, many things happened before reaching that point. For example, Yamoshi came back to life, Silas, the heir of Zalama, tried to avenge her people. A new tournament of power was created titled Tournament of Deities. Yugoku had a third child and of course, together, you and Vegeta became the most powerful beings in our cosmic reality to the point of recreating reality but this time with few planets and just a single universe. Whis interrupted his uncle by asking, but wait a minute. Where were you at that moment? Evil Daishinkan replied, well, I was killed too, so in this new reality there is only one Daishinkan. But before being killed in the reality in which my brother dominated the Saiyan, in our clash I programmed a time ring to be activated after my death and so I went back in time and that created this current reality. So I hid in universe 11 and then manipulated the angel and the god of destruction of that universe. I was the one who killed Jiren's parents because I knew that he had an interesting potential to challenge Goku so that I could have this contact with you. In other words, this current reality is where my brother is trying to do the same thing that generated the end of the other reality, which consequently generated the end of the parallel cosmic reality. I'm here to put an end to this cycle, erase all these realities created from time travel and return to moment zero. My brother swore allegiance to the cosmic gods of that parallel reality. But he only used the information to do something similar to the reality in which Goku and Vegeta became deities under my brother's command. He was supposed to save the parallel reality and our reality, so this new reality, created after my coming here, would never need to be created. So from here on out I'm going to put an end to all of this once and for all, starting with you. Evil Daishinkan was ready for combat, and once again he launched a blast of divine ki towards Goku and Vegeta. A large explosion happened and once again Vegeta received the blow using his ability to absorb the enemy's attack. Vegeta also repeats his movement by launching a final flash against evil Daishinkan who cannot dodge Vegeta's attack. The previous blow he suffered from Saiyan seems to have had an effect. Evil Daishinkan was weakening. Evil Daishinkan glared at the Saiyans. Damn, don't you realize you're disturbing me? You are preventing all realities from being saved, said the angel. Goku was surprised by Vegeta's attack, but soon realized that Vegeta had lost his transformation, Vegeta was now in Super Saiyan Blue. However, Daishinkan weakened even more, he was no longer in his peak form. Whis noticed that his uncle's powers were weakening and his paralysis magic was no longer as powerful. Whis then got rid of evil Daishinkan's magic and when he saw Goku and Vegeta in trouble he started to remember something and then said, Goku, Vegeta, you can become even stronger. I gave you part of my powers, you don't know this, but in training, the moment I defended myself from your attack, I transferred part of my divine powers to you. I did this hoping that at some point my divine key and angel would be needed in a future fight, and now is the time. My uncle is weakening. Goku and Vegeta then attack evil Daishinkan, one on each side, Goku on the left and Vegeta on the right. Both attack the enemy with the full power of the orange aura along with divine key. An unprecedented explosion occurred. Whis just watched and saw Goku and Vegeta return to their most powerful forms, but without the orange aura. Finally, Evil Daishinkan had been defeated. Evil Daishinkan says, I understand, you believe what I say, but you don't trust my methods. I understand, I was defeated, but Goku, you must stop my brother, so receive my powers. Goku was hit by divine lightning that threw him to the ground in agony. Vegeta, already without strength, couldn't do anything to help Goku. I was wrong too. I used Jiren and his family, but remember, Daishinkan is true evil. This gift I gave Goku will be the key to defeating him, and Whis, his mother is still alive. Well, this is the end for me. I trust the reconstruction and peace of the cosmic universes in your hands," said evil Daishinkan in the last moments of his life. After some time, Goku decided to bury Jiren's body to honor his memory. Meanwhile, Whis searched for his father's location and found that he was in Xenosama's palace. Whis said, Goku, Vegeta, let's go.
Whis used his powers to teleport Goku and Vegeta to Xenosama's palace. Whis noticed that Goku was as furious as he had ever been. Upon arriving at Xenosama's palace, Whis questioned his father about his mother. So you found out, said Daishinkan. Well, your mother is in Universe Zero, she can't live among us, she caused us a lot of problems, I'm sorry Wiss, but our conversation ends here. Tears started streaming down Wiss' face. You arrive, Vegeta has become powerful, hasn't he? I was the one who trained him, I used the same strategy as Goku and it worked perfectly on Vegeta because of the Ultra Ego and... Beerus said until he interrupted his speech when he saw Goku furious. Goku was furious, his gaze was fixed on Daishinkan. Suddenly, Goku put his palms together and a bluish aura with shades of silver began to emanate from his body, it was an ultra instinct, it was something that went beyond that. At a speed never seen before, Goku appeared in front of Daishinkan, with a completely different transformation. Goku caught the Daishinkan by the neck very easily, leaving even Whis and Beerus surprised. Angry Goku then said, You. You. Are bad. With the same ease of tearing a sheet of paper, Goku ripped off Daishinkan's head. As the divine blood of the father of all angels spread across the ground, Xenosama and his guards just watched. Xenosama said, finally, finally Goku has reached his peak of power. This was all necessary. Now go, save the mother of all angels in Universe Zero.